Welcome everyone to a new, uh, new episode of Inspirato Projecto. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, I think it's going to be another good one. It's going to be another good episode. Please feel free to subscribe at iTunes. <coughs> you can subscribe to Inspirato Projecto. All right. Take care. Um, hello, that was amazing. Thank you for recording that little intro for us. We can't really tell what your name is from your username on Anchor. So if we wanted to give you a shout out, what name should we use? Let us know. Okay, we are here. This is part. I would say that this is um, part two of today's podcast. Oh, I'm, I'm walking with Craig up to his uh, comedy club. I'd love to stay there, but I I've got to edit the rest of this Operation Tone Up team. I'm making good. I'm making good. Uh, what do you call it? Progress with this thing. After I sorted it all out. It's here. 
have drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like this stuff. It's a, it's a 60 milligram. Are you kidding me, dude? What a great thing! Oh my god, dude, this is so cool of you. I, I don't use it. I mean, That's I could amazing. use it, but I don't. Farm caramels, I love it. Ocean grown. Now that, oh, dude, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That should, uh, it's CBD, mm -hmm. so it's not hallucinogenic, but so, but it's pain reliever. Mm -hmm. So it should knock you out. Not that you're in pain or anything, but oh, we can go this way, right? If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I'm with you. we'll it still should, still like, feel the pain. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Instead of a Vicodin or some crap, but I think you can get a little bit of a high from it, so. <laughs> Why, thank you. Well, I've done I've done a little bit, of, and it does work. It, it's a good pain. Did it make you sleepy? Yeah, I mean, THC doesn't work too well on me. You could eat the whole thing right now and be the sleepy comic I, tonight. Oh, God, it'd be horrible. <laughs> I would just be at the microphone staring. That actually might. Staring at a light and just be like, oh. Yeah. Isn't it light weird the way... It's light. Yeah. That might actually be a funny premise, a funny gimmick for the, the, the sleepy comedian. Yeah. Well, I guess Stephen Wright did that already, yeah, right? Yeah, you got your Stephen Wright there. That's... Oh, yeah, I was just woken up out of bed, and now I'm telling you a joke, oh, which you'll understand in 15 seconds after I tell it, because my jokes are like grenades. That joke, that joke kills on Mars. <laughs> yeah, he's... He... He is a genius. He still is. He's still going. I don't I'm so glad he's still out there. And I was, I was having a conversation with a couple of my buddies um, the other day about Stephen Wright and Mitch Hedberg. Did those guys ever tour together? It seems like it would only make sense if they did. I'm sure they did shows together. I'm sure they... they I wouldn't be surprised if they knew who each other were. Or, uh, yeah, I would, I, I'm sure there was some cross-pollination there. I, I honestly don't know. That they're, I, I don't have their tour schedules in front of me. Let me get back to you. So for tonight's show, do you have do you have your jokes uh, memorized? No, Are you gonna I read them off a piece of paper? No, tonight it's not even a show. It, it, with open mics, it's just you show up, you try not to get punched out. You know, <laughs> who's gonna punch you? I don't know. There's just always an element in there. There's always at least one comic. I'm not using bunny quote. Tell your audience I'm using uh -huh. bunny quotes as I say the word comic. There's always one comic who's just you, you're laughing out of fear. Mm. You know what I mean? They're just, they're scary in a way that's like uncomfortable uh -oh. to me at least. Like if you don't laugh, they'll come off the stage and well, something strange might happen? If, if, if no one's laughing, they, they, they become alienated or something uh -oh. and they're like, you know, you're all just like my ex-wife, you know, some shit. Mm. And uh, that can get ugly. So it really, tr so comedy truly actually is a therapy session then, I guess. I think for a lot of people, they're, they're, they're definitely using it as that, without doubt or question. I think, you know, they see it as a form of therapy. I know I do, in, in part I do, but you still have to be engaging in the process of it and yeah. not just bitching and moaning out there. You got guys going yeah. up there and bitching and moaning. About, you know what I'm saying? When the pussy ain't tight and you put all this money, you took him to Olive Garden and everything and the pussy ain't tight. What's up with that, motherfucker? I want some fucking tight pussy, motherfucker. Man, <laughs> you spend all that fucking $60. $60 on you, my motherfucking bitch. We fucking don't make no fucking tight pussy. It's like fucking a clown car in a garage, motherfucker. I don't want a fucking tight pussy. Is this, uh, is this a comic you recently heard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they look at you like, you know what I mean? And if you don't nod, yes, sir, they'll kill you. Oh, jeez. Right? Yes, sir, I know exactly what you mean. Please don't kill me. So it's like uh, the, 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 uh, the mafia of comedy? Comedy. Oh, the mafia of comedy. You better. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a good Oh. We're putting you on stage tonight. The Mafia of Comedy. Or I don't know. How, which one would be better? Mafia of Comedy or Mafia it's, of Comedy? It's more like Laugh or We Put You in Cement Shoes. Oh, yeah. Laugh or We Put You in Cement Shoes. Yeah, it, it's, sometimes there's just an, an element. An element. So you laugh out of just uh, just, just, to, just right for here. good nature, just to, just because uh, you don't want them to what? Just uh, kill you. It's like high five. Oh, to I kill you. I don't, want to, I don't want to die. I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing out of survival. I don't know about you, but I want to make it I'm home tonight. Sure. That would actually be a great title for a book, Laughing Out of Survival. Laughing, God, damn right. Damn right. Jesus Christ. I don't want to wake up in the fucking back of this guy's fucking Camry. So, how many how many comics do you feel uh, kind of on average show up to some of these things? Uh, about 15, 10, 15. And uh, do you usually see the same 
suspects. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's regulars. I know. I'm getting to know people there. Not quite on a first name basis with people, but I'm definitely, I'm getting there. It, it takes time for people to get to know your face or whatever. And there's always an acclimation process. So, so do, you, uh, do you get a lot? I think I met the owner one time. I can't remember. There were two different places that were open at the same time for Ha Ha, the Ha Ha Cafe. Yeah, old new. And, um, old there, new there. So is the other place, is the new place bigger? No, it's about the same size. It may actually even be smaller, but it's, oh. I guess it's considered nicer. But what I, I think what it was was they got a cheaper rent. And they still own that property, the old oh, property. What? It looks closed down. The old property is closed down. But um, they still own it? I believe they still What do you think they're going to do with that place? Well, that's, I mean, that's the $100 question is, like, it's been sitting there, you know, vacant with the fucking ha-ha sign still on it for, like, five years now. Well, let's get a meeting with the owner, and we'll we'll figure out some awesome thing that we can do with that place. I wouldn't want to mess with that. <laughs> no, you don't like that place. No, I, I I love it and hate it, but I I think that uh, they, there's a questionable management style there. So oh. you got to you know I I don't mess with them. Are you friends with the the manager at this point? Uh, or the I'm, owner, I'm whoever. Friendly with I'm friendly with one of the owners. He's a very sweet man, uh, Jack Senior, and he's he's great, but. You know, you can tell he's, he's a bar and restaurant guy. He's just doing the best that he can. And I, I think that he doesn't know what to do with it. And he, he, he's not looking for ideas. And I, it's like, I don't, I don't know what to tell him. What an interesting uh, situation. A person who owns a comedy club yet yet uh, doesn't, doesn't have that, that creative spark within him. Does, does he ever get up on stage and do stuff? Uh, the, the dad, no. But he is funny. Uh, his son is turning into a pretty mean stand-up, so it's becoming like a family legacy club. Oh, wow. Which is what you want. Mm -hmm. So in that realm, that they're definitely, they're breaking the curb. It's like uh, uh, the Shore family, like so Mitzi. I was just going to say. Yeah, so like Mitzi, Mitzi Shore did the comedy store, and then her son, Polly, you know, got huge and now he's probably sure i guess so have you uh, tried to go to the comedy store for stuff i haven't been there lately i used to do shows there really 10 years ago yeah yeah i did shows there i just realized that i got a buddy who bartends there oh, yeah? uh yeah i need to call i need to go over there and check out the comedy store sometime who, 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 his name is james he's a bartender apparently oh, no i don't <laughs> take your word for it. Uh, i mean it's a legendary club yeah you know sure I'd love to play there. You definitely got no people. Tony Clifton played there after all. I know. Tony Clifton played uh, the improv in there. Well, this is it. You want to? Dude, I would love to. I would love to go in there. I just don't want to wait all that time because I gotta. I gotta edit that thing. No, I. I, I it's, but I will. Gonna I will come up here at some point. Call of Duty, sir. I don't want to trouble you no further. I love the fact there's a suit of armor right here in the I, entryway. You know what? I've yet to figure out the motif. Well, it might be symbolic representation for what you're describing earlier about. You know, yeah. you gotta. You gotta, you gotta have your armor on when you get up on stage. You apparently, you gotta just be able to. That's true. Isn't it? What do you think of the purple and orange uh, and whatever else? It's an interesting decor here. I love the fact that I would love that if they had Andy Kaufman painted up on the walls. Um, we got Richard Pryor. We got uh, George Carlin. Oh, we got Bill Hicks. The two dudes are right next to each other. We were talking about them earlier. That's uh, Greg Giraldo. Uh, oh, what's his name? Greg Giraldo. He's dead. Oh, Greg Giraldo's on a wall. Oh, and Joan Rivers, too. Uh, I think Mitch Hedberg is inside or... The other wall. I'm not sure. I like the pictures. It's interesting how they painted uh, Joan Rivers in her plastic surgery face rather than right. her original days with furs, face. Yeah. With furs and everything. I, I, I guess that's the Joan that we all love and respect and remember. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> the one who died of plastic surgery. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, I mean, this place has been good to me. It's, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Uh, who'd listen? I'm not a complainer. You know, and this new facility opened up a couple years ago, and I've been doing it for a year, so it's it's fine. Maybe it's time for us to concoct a variety show, and we do it over at Sunspace. I think there's something there. Yeah. So we 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 own it. You know, we 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 it's it's what we're creating. That's no right. one can say yes or no. We just do it. 
Just, just say yes. Yeah. Just say yes. Say yes to the dress. Yeah. That's how I'm looking. At it. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna put my dress on and do this open mic. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? When the pussy's tight. When the pussy's real tight. I mean, you'll do anything you can for the pussy tight. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fuck it. I'll fucking take out a new credit card that I know that pussy tight. That's what I'm talking about. When the pussy tight like that, oh my god, I forget it. I'll be like fucking, oh, motherfucking pussy tight. You could do a whole stand up comedy about the terrible comedians who show up, but they're all in the audience, aren't they? And then, uh, that, that was the urban style. I'll do the psychotic serial killing white guy style. Oh, okay. You know what I mean when the vagina's really tight like that? The vagina, it's tight. I really like tight vagina. Vagina, tight. It's a it's white guy. It's, a, it's like a Mexican version. Tight vagina. That's it. Are you, so are you, do you have a, a book that you'll be reading from or uh, are you just going to go right off read, the top yeah. of your head? I'm not going to read Gatsby tonight. Uh, I got some notes. I'll, I'll do some topics. How long would they let you up on stage for? It's five minutes. It's just five that's minutes. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's how they make their you money. you want to try to push it, extend it? Why would you? <laughs> so five minutes. So that so it starts at what time? Six. And then it goes till what time? Probably eight. eight. That's it? Two hours? That's they try it? To get, they're good about it. They try to get you out in two hours, which I like. Well, you know. So then what happens after eight? You break, and there's a real show that comes in at about nine. Oh, I got you. I got you. I would what time's that going till? Is this place closed till like two a.m. or what? What not? Sometimes they're open late. I don't know. What do I check the website? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I think so. it's open from like nine to eleven, or I don't know. Yeah, you don't know nothing. You only work here. I work the open mic. I get the hell out. That's how I look at it. I don't want any trouble. Are yeah. you doing stuff tonight that you've done before, or no? Yeah, I should. I'm gonna rework some stuff. Rework some old stuff, get to try to get a new thought or two in, hopefully, and, and just not get killed. Just, you know. Would you like to say a joke right now that you will not be performing tonight? Yeah, you know I'm saying when the pussy tied like that, and just put the motherfucking tie. That's all I can tell you. That's it. That's all I got. Perfect. Perfect. Hope you like that. That was for you, Kurt. Thank you very much. <laughs> don't point that mic at me. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Uh. Yeah. Anything else? Any... Yeah. I think I'm feeling the shot of that vodka. I'm yeah. starting to feel that. That was really good. And now you got a CBD on you, so that's true. That's true. Are you gonna do that tonight? Is that what's it? I might uh, take a bite before I start editing. The we'll see what new things evolve. Okay. It's it, it'll it'll get you to a new level, man. New level. Huh. Thank you. They recognize you. They recognize uh, you. No 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 pictures. No. Uh, Oh, no, no. Come on, my day. I hope you act that way when there are, like, a bazillion of paparazzi around you. Like, no, no oh, pictures. Just, like, so, so relaxed and just so, I, no, no I pictures, no pictures. While, and then i just be like, please stop. And just would you start posing for them? Like, I like to think sure. that I'd become friends with them, and then we'd, yeah. I'd be like, okay, you guys, come with me. We're going to do this cool stuff. Yeah, I'd be nice. I'd be like, all right, let's 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 work together. You know, but I, I mean, say, just imagine, like, the possibilities of that. Some folks get annoyed by the paparazzi. Could you imagine you, if you work together with them, you go, okay, guys, this is my plan. What I are think, your thoughts? They go along well, with I you no matter people, what. I think people do. I think that there is an engineering on the star's part mm -hmm. to, to be in front of paparazzi or, or when they're confronted with paparazzi. Hey, let's do this. Or, you know what I mean? I think it's good for business. I think that's how they work. I don't know. I, I'm not in that world. I you know, It seems pure and fun but uh, you know and I think eventually yeah I would want like this thing like just look yeah. at that you know it's like imagine that in your face all day long by like eight or nine other like microphones in your yeah, face terrible. and and cameras this close yeah, I, and then they're all listening on your every word and whatever bad word you say or bad comment or thought that's what they that's what they'll print yeah. or you know you could you could set up where you go okay guys here's a perfect one for you to take out of context there are lights in the sky! Print it. Print it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Adolf Hitler is a great, nice person, sort of. You know what I mean? And then, right. Like, they, they, you cannot sense uh, facetiousness <laughs> in, in, right, uh, the, the, in the new, in the whatever, publications that's, out that's, there. Craig Spivak uh, said he's a fan of Hitler. On the, uh, Could you imagine that? Okay, so, like, you say a whole series of things, and then someone cuts out that particular language. You know, like how you'll see on... Um, on, on movie posters for reviews. Like, you know, I might say, okay, dot, 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 
thumbs up, dot, dot, dot. And then that's it. But maybe the whole sentence was, it would be okay and I'd give it a thumbs up if it was actually a good movie, but it's really terrible, right? So they, they take out those little things. So imagine if you had this you had this conversation and then they just take it and they splice it exactly exactly how they want. But really, it was spaces within a whole per- two hour period. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that happens all the time. I think that TMZ and all those uh, outlets, whatever, content providers, uh, just, you know, take it and cut it the way they're supposed to cut it and, or the, the way they want it cut. Now, this is this just popped in my brain. Do you think with cutting together dialogue in that particular way of manufacturing it, do you think that it's it can only happen within that time span that you're spending with that person or can you cut and paste it throughout all of the dialogue they've ever had throughout their life? Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> That's what I would then, want like, to do. Tangibly, you could totally like make an awesome review from Roger Ebert about right, you right. know one of your shows. Yeah, Roger Ebert said, this is great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. yeah. G dot 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 R dot 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 E, right? right. You just, you, you manufacture it how you want. Yeah, absolutely. You can, in, this, in this day and age, you can do whatever you want. I think it would hold up in court, too, because technically they did say that stuff. What? I wanted to put on airplane mode. Oh, right, right, right. You know, I don't know what's going on with this tech, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'll i deal with... Those are... I call all that shit first world problems, you know. If you're... You, if you've got a paparazzi following you, those are probably good problems to have if you're trying to get ahead in show business. So. Would you want paparazzi following you around all the time wherever you're going? Oh, God, no. Fuck no. So what's the level of your f- famosity that you want to I'm, I'm have? I that. I don't want that. Charlie Sorley, Joan. What's up, man? How are you, sir? Good to see you. I have no idea. I'll take what I can get. I I enjoy my anonymity, truly, even though I understand that you have to expose yourself in order to be famous. Well, exposing yourself can take a few different meanings now, couldn't it? <laughs> I'll do what that I got to do. bring you famous. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Spivak exposed himself. He's, he, ru- he was in his raw mood. He exposed himself to the Ha Ha Comedy Club. You want some fame? I'll give you some fame yes. right here, right now. Oh, yes. I'll yeah, give you some right fame. Now. Yeah, I'm not... I don't aspire to that kind of shit, so... You know, I, I like the process, and I like being on stage, but I can't... I can't honestly say I'm not... Ooh, I see anything past that. You know, so, I don't know. How do you feel it's going to go tonight? It'll be fine. It's... You see, Charlie... He just came in. It's just like it's just, it's like he's walking into his day job. And he's like, hey, that's it. That's all it is. It's just get through the shit as best as you can, and uh, maybe some gold, some, you know, tiny. I always look for just like one sentence actually worked. You know? mm-hmm. So if that if that is the result, I'll take it. Comedy definitely is about sentences. Oh, you have no idea. Five sentences to build one word. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then eventually you've got five minutes that are successful that you've worked on for the last two years. You could say one extraordinary joke very slowly. <laughs> what do you be like? I was raised by sloths. What can I say? Spaghetti is a delicious. Dessert? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hit dessert. That's oh, yeah. the gag. Well, yeah, that's the punchline. People are not expecting you to go that direction. They, they didn't see dessert coming. Always got to keep them. Always got to keep them guessing. They, they thought they were hitting the main course or something yeah. like that. Andy Pasta or something. Oh, yeah. I hit them with dessert. That's what I call time travel comedy. You took them right to the dessert. Took them right, right back and forth, back and forth. That's what you do, baby. Take them one way, go another. <laughs> That's all I got, Kurt. I don't know what to tell you. Showbiz. Thank you very much. Yeah. And you have a fun time in there. It was good hanging out with you again. Good to you, this, I will, I will text this to you as soon as this one is ready. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to make another podcast within the next hour. Okay. So, um... That's awesome. Hell, dude. <laughs> that would be funny if that was your comedy bit. You just play our podcast on the microphone for five minutes. <laughs> here you go. Uh, I'm just going to leave this here. Here's something funny that happened today. We'll fucking kill you, Spivak. <laughs> fucking don't do that fucking thing. That's right. I'll kill you. That's Charlie right. would kill me. He'd yeah. Kill you. He saw you two was. He'd fucking kill us all. 
You kill me if I did. I gotta put it in. You gotta put the time in. That's it. That's all I got. That's, that's all I know. All right. We'll see you in the funny papes. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Yeah. See you soon. Have fun tonight. All right. Thank you. I will. You're welcome. Bye bye. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, once again Craig Spivak, the author extraordinaire. I think he said the name of his other book was called Devil's Country. Don't quote me on that. However, uh, you can quote him on that if you listen to the previous podcast. Craig, I met on a subway. I was on my way to Lawrence August's house to record some music, to make some music. As we always do when we, when we get together, there's always at least one song, if not two, that, that are created. And um, so I met him on a, a subway. We got to talk and we got to talk about improvisation. He uh, started telling me about the fact he's a stand-up comedian and that he wrote a book. And I said, oh, my God, I got to have you on on uh, in Sprata Projecto on K-Chung. I got to have you on there. <clears throat> and so, uh, sure enough, he was on there, and he's been a guest quite frequently. Very yes and. That's that's the quality that I'm looking, here, uh, looking for here, people. Yes and. Look, if you don't know what that philosophy is, and I would think that if you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance you probably already know what the yes and principle is, because something... There's something about this podcast that reverberates with you. As just as any movie or podcast or anything that I uh, am involved with uh, that I listen to reverberates with me in some way. I feel a resonance. I feel a familiarity. I feel a, um, a reflection of my own soul in that thing. So if you feel the same way, which I... I don't understand why you would listen to this if you if you didn't feel some sort of um, if you didn't feel some sort of um, familiarity or recognition or resonance, etc., etc., etc. I cannot imagine that you'd be listening to this podcast if that were not the case. Uh, I wouldn't. I I don't listen to sports podcasts because I'm just not into sports. Um, people who like sports, they listen to sports podcasts. They resonate with that idea. So if you've tuned into this sh- this 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 podcast, you I, I I have a good feeling that you might be one of those people who is um, into ensemble, into all for one and one for all, into these kinds of ideas of people connecting with each other and appreciating one another's brilliant ideas and, 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 and elevating them, encouraging them, helping bring them to light. So, Craig's going in, going to do his stand-up comedy. Trust me, I had thought about going in there and, and uh, you know, doing a podcast before he played. However, I have got to get this Operation Tone-Up video. I'm in a groove now. I... I, you know, when you first come across editing something, for anybody who knows what it's like to edit, you got all this footage. In this case, I also have photographs. I got pictures. So I had to look through all those pictures. I had to title them. I had to, and then I stuck them into the order in which they occurred throughout the day. Um, then I did my first experimentations with color correction and um, on each of the videos. So... You know, once once that organization takes place, because before that it's just confusion, it's chaos, it's just all over the place. And you feel really good once you get into that groove and you feel like, holy cow, I'm making progress here. I'm making progress. We're moving forward. Things are evolving. I can see how this is shaping up. And then you start getting ideas for what you want to do in the future, for future things. When that happens, I always like to... And I found such, such um, value in it is when you have those ideas, make 
just already go to those sections and just start editing those already. So you got them done, you got them there. Now that becomes another piece in the back of your brain subconsciously where you know that you've made progress. So, so it becomes sort of like, um, you know, if you connect dots, it becomes a dot that you end up, okay, cool. Now I just got to move the line to there now. And um, rather than feeling like you have got to do it in order, evidently it's going to come out that way. But you don't have to. No one's requiring you. No one's requiring me to do this in order. Uh, in terms of the ways in which I'm editing. So I can already edit a section. Got it ready. Bam. Now, who knows what happens. During that time while I'm, while I'm editing that, I might get ideas for other interesting things that I can then edit <clears throat> and put together. So... Oh man, it's just, it's just, um, it's a good feeling when you know that you are the world creator. The more we trust and appreciate and move forward with creating our own worlds, realities, the more fun I think we're going to have. Because if we're so immersed in creating our world, we are less concerned with how others might perceive that world or, um, you know, the less we're concerned about others joining in that world, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, creating that world, letting it come about. The happy accidents. We've talked a lot about this with David Lynch. The happy accidents. He's got ideas, and he just rolls with it. He goes, I don't know which direction this is going to go in. I don't know where this is going to go, but I'm going to be obedient. And it doesn't even have to be that sort of strict idea, obedience, but just the idea of like, you know, I got your back. Hey, idea. That's all it is. The idea just wants someone to have its back. Just like we want to have someone to have our back. Why? Okay. This is where the golden rule falls into place. And I love this idea. This just popped in my brain. The golden rule. Do unto others as you want to have done to yourself. And it's funny because we heard the wizard talk about that. But yet, well, in addition, that is something I've been talking with a lot of folks about for years. So it was awesome to hear um, him sort of reconfirm that idea in his speech, but the idea of the golden rule. So if I want to be, you know, if, if I appreciate the idea of someone giving me a high five or going, yep, got your back, um, why wouldn't the universe? Why wouldn't the universe would? I feel I came from the universe, so I, I contain within me is the vibes that I receive from the universe. So, I should have all those abilities to do those things. It's like having a computer. This is what just popped in my brain. It's like having a computer that has not yet made its own program or has not yet um, gone on the internet for that matter. The computer has this ability. You can do it. You've heard about others doing it. Making programs, uh, uh, you know, making video games, etc., etc. All whatever, all this crazy stuff. So when you start doing that. You start accessing the system. Holy moly. Uh, we're very surprised by what we find. Imagine the first the, the, computer programmer who goes, Oh, you know what? I got this weird idea. I want to uh, make a program that takes into account all the groceries that I buy. So every time I have a receipt, you know, I'll 
enter it into the program, then the program will sort it out, and then it'll tell me how much money I've spent each month, each year, et cetera, et cetera, on groceries, and then it'll uh, format for me which of those things are nutritious, which of those things uh, are taking taking years off my life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You make that program. Well, that didn't exist until someone did it, and then there it was. That's kind of the thing. We got a big program out there. Universe is a big, big program. So is our brain. So it's that idea of going, I have an idea. Let's try this. And then you see, you see how it comes about. But the gift you cannot receive until you test out the theory. That's the funny thing. It's the willingness to test out that theory. It's the willingness to move forward and see what happens. That's where the gifts come through. It's, it's astounding. So, um, I trust Craig is going to have a good night tonight. I trust he's going to have fun. I trust he's going to meet nice people. And uh, he's going to find those elements within his reality experience that lead him towards doing great things with his with his visions um i trust that'll happen tonight okay folks that is it for this one this is a short podcast that's it for this one take care follow your heart be awesome subscribe on itunes Follow the Inspirato. Oh, I almost forgot to say the Weird Tales podcast. They left me a message. That woman you heard talking, that's Weird Tales podcast. Also, Man Behind the Machine left us a, a wonderful, a wonderful soundscape. Thank you so much. Take care. See you next time. I'm, 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 I'm